Hello and welcome to a series of discussions about the Southern Kent Island Sanitary Project. My name is Holly Tompkins and I am a Senior Development Review Planner with the Department of Planning and Zoning and I will be your host. To learn more about the project, we've developed a few videos and you may find all of these at Queen Anne's County website www.qac.org. The webpage will have more background and information on each of the topics that we're going to be covering in these videos one of which will be the step system technology covered by Alan Quimby, the chief sanitary engineer. We will also cover public health issues by Dr. Joseph Ciotola, who's our health officer, and John Nickerson, director of environmental health. There will be nitrogen reduction goals by Rob Gunter, environmental planner, project funding by the director of budget and finance, Jonathan Seaman, home value considerations by Dick Sells, who's a, a, a realtor, and also the HOA president for Kent Island Estates. And lastly, who I am here with today, Todd Mon, the director of public works, who will be giving us a background overview of the Southern Kent Island sanitary project. The first question we have for you today, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mon, is where is this failing septic system problem? Well, Holly, for many decades, uh, both the county and the state have been faced with the problem of failing septic systems on Southern Kent Island. Uh, behind me there is a, a map here of the area. The area includes nine existing communities south of the Mattapique School Complex along Maryland Route 8. These communities include, beginning at, at the north end, the uh, Mattapique Estates, Bats Neck or the Normans community, the Sunny Isle of Kent, Chesapeake Estates, Kentmore, Queen Anne's Colony, Kent Island Estates, the largest community, Roman Coke, and Tower Gardens. Okay, how long has this problem been out there? These subdivisions began to develop in the 1950s when land speculation peaked in the county uh, when the first Chesapeake Bay Bridge was constructed. At that time, the county did not have any local zoning that would control development of these, these subdivisions and these lots. The only legal requirement to begin selling lots was to record a plat in the land records but the state did at that time regulate septic systems as they still do today. Overall, there are 1,518 existing single family homes, a couple of commercial uses, which include uh, a small marina and a few restaurants, and over 1,600 vacant lots of record. Now, the remaining vacant lots are currently unbuildable, but a public sewer line could change that condition which would allow for the addition of many more homes, that is unless uh, development controls are implemented when a public sewer system is provided to this area. What has created the problem? The majority of the septic systems used uh, for these homes were constructed prior to the existence of any meaningful septic system regulations. They were developed in areas that exhibited high groundwater conditions, poorly drained soils, and very small lot sizes. These site-specific parameters made the use of septic systems undesirable as a permanent wastewater disposal alternative. And now these systems have created a public health threat for our residents. So just what is causing this public health threat? Well, the State Department of Environmental Health, and you'll hear from John Nickerson and, and Dr. Ciotola, uh, that's the agency that is, is responsible for regulation of on-site waste disposal systems within the county. Now they've estimated that 80 percent of these existing systems meet the definition of failure and this is defined as direct penetration of wastewater into the subsurface groundwater without a proper dry soil zone for the attenuation of pathogens and chemicals. What exactly does that mean? Good question. Now we have a display behind me here. This is a cross-section view of a, a drain field, one that's functioning properly and one that is not functioning properly. And as you can see, the drain tiles on the left-hand slide show that the seasonal high water intercepts the, the drain lines from the septic fields. That is a failed system because the water from those drain tiles is directly infiltrating into the groundwater of the state. 
On the right-hand side of the chart, you see a, a functioning system that works well where you have a minimum two-foot dry separation zone of soil below the bottom of the trench. That is what we strive for as a, as a functioning system. So 80% of the systems in this region are similar to the one on the left side where the, the uh, effluent penetrates the groundwater directly in, at some parts of the year. In some cases, in addition to that, there have been severe failures such that the waste from these drain tiles comes to the surface above grade and ponds and homeowners' lawns and yards. And this condition has exposed the waste to both human and animal contact. In addition, you know, these septic systems are also polluting the Chesapeake Bay and Eastern Bay with excessive nutrient loadings, in particular nitrogen, which then deplete oxygen levels needed to support a healthy bay and aquatic life. And uh, we have a chart, I believe, up now that shows that condition where the drain field uh, drains into the groundwater and then, of course, the nutrients are carried via the groundwater directly into the Chesapeake Bay and their estuaries. And that is not a good situation. What has been done to address this problem? Well, these conditions have resulted in a new state health policy requiring homeowners to install sewage holding tanks rather than to continue using their septic system. This is a very expensive undertaking as it involves routine pump outs, which can cost upwards of $500 as much as $800 per month depending on the household's uh, water usage. Wow, that sounds very expensive. How many people are on holding tanks now? Well, this policy was adopted by our local health department in April of this year. So far, only a few homes have been subject to this policy. However, this number will increase over time. Why will the number of holding tanks increase in the future? Well, anytime a homeowner which wishes to add living space, add a garage or a bedroom to their existing house, or um, if they want to sell their home, they have to get a septic system test and pass that test. And as mentioned, over 80% of these um, systems are currently failing and will likely not be approved for continued use if they are tested. This has, in a few cases, already created a situation where a homeowner was unable to sell um, his, his house. So what can we do to avoid having an entire community full of holding tanks? Well, the county commissioners, um, county staff, state officials, and community leaders have all come together and worked collectively to develop a balanced solution to correct both the public health threat and the nitrogen uh, pollution problem permanently. Now, this plan does call for the extension of a new public sewer system to these nine communities and to treat that wastewater at the county's state-of-the-art Enhanced Nutrient Removal, or ENR, wastewater treatment plant which is located uh, just north of the Route 8 overpass next to the Chesapeake Bay Business Park. <clears throat> now this treatment at this facility will not only eliminate the public health threat, it will also drastically reduce uh, nitrogen discharges into the, into the bay. What's the importance of reducing these nitrogen discharges? Well, high levels of nitrogen fuel unnaturally high levels of algae in the water which blocks the sunlight from reaching underwater grasses, which serve as a habitat and, uh, and, and food. Now, when this algae then dies, it decomposes by bacteria that consumes the oxygen in the water, which results in a very unhealthy and deadly environment for marine life. Now, the EPA Clean Water Act has set state-by-state -state goals to reduce uh, nitrogen discharges into the Chesapeake Bay. Each county must, in turn, plan to reduce their nitrogen discharge uh, loads measured in pounds in a county-specific watershed improvement plan, or as we call it, WIP. And this project, if, if it moves forward, would go a long, long way towards helping us meet these local clean water standards and goals into the future. Sounds like a lot of work. Where do we go from here? Well, in order for this proposal to be successful, many, many factors had to be carefully considered and balanced. While the primary objective is to correct the pollution problem associated with uh, existing septic systems, the project must also be able to manage new home connections at a reasonable level, a reasonable number, and be affordable to existing residents. 
As such, we are striving to achieve a target monthly charge for residents of $100 per month for this system. This would both be inclusive of construction costs to get the system in place and the ongoing operations and maintenance costs. Where will the money come from to get the project started? Well, public sewer extension projects are funded generally by the new system users, including both construction and O&M. We needed to strategically evaluate a variety of project parameters and funding opportunities to meet this $100 target charge. They include identification of a reliable and cost-effective public sewer collection system, permitting some level of vacant lot infill development, use of the economic benefit premium for vacant lot infill where new homes would pay more than current residences, current folks that live there uh, for a public sewer service connection. We also looked from a funding standpoint at community development block grants, CDBG grants for qualified residents uh, at certain income levels, low interest state loans, and largely we're going to be relying on a state funding subsidy using the Bay Restoration Fund, which is a must for our affordability levels. What has been done to get all of these pieces put together? Well, as of this year, the county has taken four key actions. Number one, we have completed an extensive evaluation and selection of a public sewer and collection and transmission system using the septic tank effluent pump technology. This is found to be a more cost effective and uh, a system with proven public reliability. So we're, we, we like that system. Secondly, we've, uh, the county commissioners has inter have introduced local legislation that would require adjacent existing lots that are under common ownership to merge in order to meet minimum zoning standards. This legislation, if it is adopted, will effectively reduce the infill um, new home connections from 1,600 down below 650 new units. We've also investigated the economic benefit premium value, which is an additional charge that can be assignable only to those new connections and not to the existing residents to help offset the, the uh, overall costs to the homeowners. And lastly, we've engaged with state officials for access to uh, state subsidies via the Bay Restoration Fund and low interest loans. A capture of these state subsidies will require additional state legislation um, in 2014, and that is essential, as I said earlier, to meet that $100 per month uh, target charge for our, our residents. Okay, great. So how can people, citizens of the county, learn more? Well, to learn more about the project, we have developed a project webpage that uh, folks can visit, and it's uh, www.qac.org. And this webpage has more background information, subject-specific videos, as you mentioned earlier today, including the step system technology, the public health issues, the nitrogen reduction goals that we are striving to achieve, the zoning and lot mergers and the, the land use aspects of the project, um, project funding, and home value considerations that folks may be interested in uh, learning more about. Is there anything that residents can do to help? Sure. In addition, we certainly want to get uh, the residents' feedback on our proposal on the project, and uh, we are interested in learning more from, from our citizens. So in order to get their feedback, we've enlisted the Anne Arundel Community College, um, their Center for uh, study of local issues to administer a confidential survey uh, to gather this information. Now this, this information will be mailed directly from the college uh, sometime before Thanksgiving and we also have included a short video piece um, explaining the survey on our webpage. We also are hosting a, a open house meeting on Thursday, December 19th at the Ken Island High School where folks can come and visit and, um, and look at maps of their property and discuss uh, questions with the local officials. And that'll be from 7 to 10 p.m. and it's going to be an open house forum where folks can come in at any time during that window and uh, meet and look at, uh, look at our display boards and talk to staff. Great. Thank you, Todd. Do you have anything else to add to that? Yes. We also hope to have the ability for homeowners to complete the survey that they'll receive in the mail online at our uh, open house meeting on the uh, 19th of December. 
In addition, you can, folks can also contact me directly at any time. I am uh, the Director of the Department of Public Works, and um, my email address is uh, tmon at qac.org. Great. Thank you, Todd. We'll look forward to speaking with the rest of the folks in the rest of the videos. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.